Aisha Siddiqui. Uh, Pakistan's current government is the first civilian administration in Pakistan's history to complete its full term. And elections are due to be held within the next three months. Are elections a reason for hope in Pakistan, where many internal problems accumulate? Well, of course they are. I mean, elections will mean that people will get used to, in Pakistan, to the idea of, A, um, electing their own representatives and then sending them away if they don't like them. Uh, so, you know, that's part of democracy. But eventually one hopes that if this process continues, then, then there will be better moments when there will be greater accountability of leadership, greater pressure on them to deliver. Uh, and so what you will have is a political system in which the public has more stakes than an authoritarian system which comes and goes as it pleases or where the military has had greater role to play in sending a government home. Hmm. Over many decades, the military has been at the forefront of Pakistani politics. To the surprise and skepticism of many, the military under General Kayani has withdrawn itself from the political center stage to supposedly weaken the government's sovereignty. What is your analysis of the military's current political reticence? You know, in making this assumption that the military is withdrawn from politics, we forget two critical things. Um, firstly, that military in Pakistan has never come into power until it feels threatened at a personal level. Musharraf was sacked by, General Musharraf was sacked by Nawaz Sharif, therefore uh, he intervened, therefore his generals intervened. Similar, Ziaul Haq, tension between Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto uh, and Ziaul Haq. So firstly, one needs to understand that there is no immediate threat. Here is a political government which in the past five years has done exactly what the military wanted it to do, almost exactly. There have been troubled times, there have been points of conflict, but you know, so far they've not annoyed the military. So there is no reason for the military to want to come into direct power. They've been in control of critical policy making, be it policy in India, on the United States, on Afghanistan, nuclear weapons. So if that is not disturbed, then why would they um, disturb the political government? And General Kiani or his generals continue to be ambitious. And next time around, where they feel threatened at a personal level, uh, they will step back. So out of all the problems Pakistan is facing, according to you, which should be given highest priority after the formation of the government post-elections? I think it's human resource development. That's most critical for the country to develop uh, economically, socially, culturally. There needs to be investment on education, on training of people, on making sure that people know, uh, you know, have get vocational training uh, as well as proper education. Quality of education has to improve. And I think the other thing which is linked with education is the, uh, you know, the, the, the issue of narrative building. I think a new narrative of better politics, uh, better religious discourse has to evolve in Pakistan. Okay, thank you very much.